Governor Edwards did say this is sexual harassment. However, not all lawmakers are pushing for Shedler's resignation. Many want to see how this case plays out before making any judgments. So what we know right now is that the victim was shot right here at around 3.30 p.m. He was taken to the hospital shortly after and was pronounced dead. A lot of the neighbors aren't willing to talk because it's the second shooting in this area in six months. Irma is not expected to land in the Gulf, but New Orleans Mayor Mitch Landrieu said yesterday he is working on precautionary evacuation plans that would send residents north. At today's press conference, Keith the Zoo at Greenwood urged the Brett Commissioners to launch a third-party investigation into the zoo's management. This is in light of the recent accreditation loss. Thank you, Michael and Sylvia. Right here is where the suspect attempted to break into the home. Although no one was home at the time, the video surveillance you're about to see and a high-speed four-wheeler chase led police to a quick arrest this afternoon. In the House of Representatives right now, lawmakers are trying to come up with a last-minute compromise for this special session. If they can't come up with something tonight, it may end in failure. The Louisiana Department of Justice cannot proceed with a prosecution of either Officer Lake or Officer Salomon. Nearly a year and a half after the killing of Elton Sterling, the criminal case involving two Baton Rouge police officers is closed. This decision was not taken lightly. Attorney General Jeff Landry announced on Tuesday that officers Blaine Salamone and Howie Lake would not be prosecuted. Each independently concluded that both officers acted in a reasonable and justifiable manner. This 34-page report explains the investigation and what factored into this decision. Alton Sterling was selling CDs outside of the Triple S Food Mart in North Baton Rouge when a man called police to report Sterling had threatened him. Salamone and Lake were dispatched to the scene and an altercation ensued, which resulted in Sterling's death. A handgun was removed from Sterling's pocket after he was shot six times by Salamone. Autopsy results released today indicated that Sterling had methamphetamines, cocaine, alcohol, and THC in his system at the time of his death. Considering this, it is reasonable that Mr. Sterling was under the influence and that contributed to his non-compliance. The investigation also took a closer look into Sterling's previous run-in with law enforcement in 2009 where he was armed and resisted arrest. Police Chief Murphy Paul said he will decide disciplinary action for the officers by the end of the week. An unusual sight to say the least. I would imagine that if somebody went home and told their wife that they saw a camel walking down the street, they'd probably think that they had been drinking or something. Walking down the street thinking she would go totally unnoticed, Bubbles the camel escaped from her pen four times today. She seems to have figured out how to untie her knots on her gate. A photo posted on Facebook showed the animal standing off of Buddy Ellis Road in Denham Springs. Usually going across the street to, uh, to see her mama. Owners say that she's escaping to find her favorite snack, graham crackers. She likes to come get graham crackers at my house. She's been doing that since she was born, and she just comes periodically to visit her grandmother. The Williams family has bottle-fed Bubbles since she was six weeks old. Oh, she just thinks she can come back and forth now. <laughs> In addition to being an escape artist, the camel is also a local celebrity famous for her live-action role in the annual One Night in Bethlehem nativity scene. She does, she does charity-type events with her, and she's pretty busy around Christmas. After a long day of strolling, Bubbles is back in her pen resting. And although she didn't go far, Bubbles' family is happy she's home. I don't want her to run all to them. Then somebody has to find her. Abby Rocha, WBRZ <laughs> News 2. Hot boiled crawfish are a staple here in South Louisiana, but with the recent freezing temperatures, many are wondering if supplies this year will be short. When freezing temperatures hit, crawfish tend to go into hibernation mode. And when that happens, they, they stop growing and they stop catching, they don't, they don't get into the trap, so then there's, there's not much out there and it drives the price up. Getting off on a late start isn't the only problem these local businesses are facing. Crawfish that we're getting um, are smaller, but we're also struggling with the hardness of the shell. When crawfish come out of hibernation, they have a new fresh shell instead of molting. They don't peel as easy, they don't boil as easy, so that's mainly the biggest concern that we're having right now is the shell itself. 
However, not to worry, as long as temperatures stay up, the crawfish season will get back to normal. Times already of, of getting um, bigger. They, they've gone through one or two molts since the freeze, the past freezes, and um, they're starting to grow a little bit and catch more. So This weekend with Super Bowl Sunday, it might be a kind of a tough weekend to get them, to have enough, you know, to, for everybody. And usually high prices are expected to go down within the next week or two. Just be patient. Um, they will come back. Um, they will get bigger. The shelves will get harder. Um, just this is a really tough season for the industry. With the Manship School, I'm Abby Rocha. The historic flood of 2016 devastated many homes, property, and local businesses. Nearly six months later, Clegg's Nursery is holding their grand opening weekend after recovering from the damage. In and started looking around and realized I was um, no longer employed and that there was absolutely no way we could rebuild this build business. While Clegg's Nursery didn't suffer severe damage, nearby Naylor's Hardware and Garden Center took on five feet of water. I got a phone call from Tom asking me if I would be interested in coming over here and just doing the same thing over here. So two days later, I was uh, now part of Clegg's Nursery. The two longtime garden and home improvement store owners decided to reopen under one name to help recover from the damage of the flood. Just had a handshake and agreed that we we're going to help each other. We we're going to figure out the details later. So we have Johnny Naylor's extensive uh, bulk seed department that he was known for. We brought in their hardware. We've got an excellent supply of long handled tools in addition to a lot of new true value products. The business partners immediately got together and began planning for how they would rearrange and space out the five acres of land at Clegg's to hold all the new inventory. Uh, we got it done. It just took a lot of work to do it. but And that's what the grand opening is all about this weekend. It began yesterday and we had our ribbon cutting out in the front and uh, we've offered a lot of incentives for people to come. It's been a real uh, blessing for me. Like I say, I mean, it just gives me an opportunity to do um, <clears throat> other things. Yeah, I mean, I lost my retirement um, for the most part. I mean, I was counting on that. That's okay. My stuff got wet. Um, you know, I can get more stuff. Abby Rocha, Tiger TV.